The second half of the 19th century saw great improvements in communications when the railway, the Jörtan Shinda Canal, and the narrow gauge railway coming from different directions converged in the town. The transportation of people was centred around the Stongebro Inn. In 1762, it had as many as 70 horse drawn carriages come and go in one day. Even the postal service attended to the transport of people. And then the boat services arrived in 1832, when the Jurta Canal was completed. Soon steamships arrived to conduct passenger traffic between Linköping and Stockholm. Railways began to be built in the 1850s, and the linköping norrköping route was first inaugurated in 1872. The journey took close to two hours. The big day was celebrated in an impressive way, with all notables of both towns present. In the evening, everyone dined with the county governor at Linköping Castle. Everyone else celebrated in the taverns around the town. There was much delight that one could now travel by train out into the world. S's Swedish Railways chief architect Edersvad, who had designed altogether 297 Swedish station houses, all in a historical building style, designed the station building. Look at the building. It could be a French wine chateau in Renaissance style. Two wings have now been added, which destroys this impression a little. The Shinda Canal was completed at the same time as the railway. The narrow gauge railway network was developed across the countryside. Linköping was an important junction which contributed to the decision to move the garrison there with its various regiments. There was some hesitation in there being so many military personnel who might turn up drunk at the places of entertainment in town. But the army garrison came to be Linköping's largest employer. Cafés, patisseries and cinemas did well from all the military and national servicemen who wanted to go out and amuse themselves in the evenings. Supplying food for the regiments contributed to an increase in income for many in town and the surrounding country. Another industry that really made the most of the railways in Östergötland was the sugar industry. All the sugar beets from the surrounding area were transported directly to the factory and easily on from there to the refineries by the narrow gauge railway. This was the beginning of an intensive period at the beginning of the 20th century that continued for 50 years until 1955 when the sugar industry was shut down. Now we shall look at the railway hotel on the other side of Hangartan. Today it is called the Park Hotel. 